Hi, I'm John Biggs, and we are here with Jonah Peretti, founder and CEO of BuzzFeed. So this is one of my favorite sites I get to go over there. You just talked about how people are essentially crazy. And is there any like physical proof? Have you, have you researched this at all to figure out that we're all actually, our brains are changing and that we're all going to turn Well, I think like, we've always been crazy. Sure. I mean, I mean, you know, part, part of it is that, that there's a lot of research that shows that, that people think of themselves in this very simplified, unified way when people actually are complex and have lots of different competing things in their brain. And this causes people, I actually had, had, had someone tell me, I get frustrated by, by some of the, of the entertaining content on BuzzFeed. You know, it makes me upset that you have this, you know, and I was sure. like, well, why don't you just not read it? Nobody and he, and he says, well, I can't not read it. You know, I, I was like, well, read the reporting, read the long form. They're like, yeah, it's such great quality reporting, long form. And I read that too, but I can't help but get distracted by it. <laughs> and it's like people are almost mad at themselves for being complex. People are almost mad at themselves for like wanting to be entertained or wanting to, you know, you, 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 you form it, you know, people form these identities and they say, I'm like a serious guy who only does serious stuff. And, and it's not actually true. There's parts of you that are, that are interested in trivial things. There's parts of you that are interested in entertaining things. People are interested in things that, that make them feel an emotion as well as that make them um, understand an idea or learn new information. And so embracing that complexity, I think, is something that, that good media companies have always done throughout history, um, but, but that um, people sometimes can't admit to themselves that they are as complex as they are. I always put a comments at the bottom when people say this, why did I read this, wasted my life or whatever. It's like <laughs> you can return your official TechCrunch clicking mouse that clicks on everything <laughs> and we'll give you your money back because you really don't have to click on everything, but we do click on everything. And in your case, you have a very interesting window on this whole, whole aspect. We talked about some of the, you talked about some of your uh, graphs and charts that you're able to see uh, how long people view videos. Is that changing the way we are producing media and that we're producing uh, content? I mean, I think that it's an instance of being able to have more data shows you what's actually happening. You know, in 20 years ago when someone, I think we're in the New Yorker's old office, but you know, you'd read a New Yorker and probably a lot of people wouldn't make it through the first few paragraphs of a long New Yorker profile, right? But you couldn't measure that, mm -hmm. you know? And if you're a writer, you said, oh, I, my piece was published in the New Yorker yeah, and that was yeah. it. And you were, pra you were ha happy and, you know, that, that, that's still the case. Now with the web, you can say, oh, this piece was read four times more than this other piece. Or people dropped off at a really high rate on this piece and people continue to read on, this, on, on, on another one. And so ultimately it's good having more data. But people get used to the, the, these bubbles of ignorance where they can say, oh, like, I, I just am imagining that this is the way things work. But really, they, they, they have no data at all. So they're kind of imagining what they want to it imagine. It seems like we're in a, in a transition period between two modes of producing media, where you had the old agency model, I guess you could say, where we have this hot star that we're going to put in a movie, and we're going to make this great movie. And the only metric was essentially box office. But now you have metrics that are based on how, how long people are watching on Amazon. Uh, you can produce an entire show based on people's interests in Kevin Spacey and House of Cards. You create a, you create a show just based on that interest, and that's fascinating. Yeah, um, I think that, that, that what Netflix is doing is really interesting. I think that sometimes people overstate it and say that, that you can just engineer with science. You, you, know, you still need mm -hmm. to have a great uh, per actor perform and deliver and a great script and all these things. but, but uh, but there's a possibility in the media industry to combine art and science in a way that has never been done before. And I think it's pretty exciting watching, you know, watching that. Is that what you think you guys are doing over there at BuzzFeed? It's a huge, I mean, we spend so much time developing technology and our stats and, and trying to understand how people are consuming media. And then we spend so much time brainstorming ideas, coming up with creative ideas, calling people, working on scoops, trying to, to, to break news. So, so there's a, there's a, a definite art and, and science and, and kind of treating them both uh, on sort of equal footing um, really lets you do things that weren't possible before. Mm -hmm. And we both have kids and uh, I'm, I watch a lot of media and I think about a lot of the way we're consuming things now. What do you think is the, the landscape of human thoughts going to look like in when those guys are 22, 25, when they've popped out of this whole social media world where we grew up with maybe Flintstones on TV and that was about it? 
I think it's really hard to project that far out. You know, it, it's like we don't even know whether Google Glass is going to be the next Segway or the next iPhone. Mm -hmm. And and like pretty badass. And, and like that's like a year from now, right? Mm -hmm. The Segway was pretty badass. I mean, before the Segway came out, it was pretty badass, right? Yeah, I guess so. I, I'm not saying I know. I'm saying I don't know. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that I think it's going to be the next Segway, <laughs> but but like it could be the next iPhone. It could be the next Segway, and and that's something that is is going to happen in, over the next you know month or year, and could have a huge effect on media. You know, so it is it is hard to to, to predict. Um, you know, and, and extrapolating trends, I think, is is tricky because you know people will say, oh, we're more connected and things are more social, but then you'll see kind of waves where people say, well, now I want to have a space where I can you know subscribe to long form articles that I read on my own. You know, mm -hmm. and and there's nothing social about it, and it's slow and it's not short, and you know, so you see you know you see these waves happen, but if you can't extrapolate them too far because. You know, people wouldn't have guessed that BuzzFeed wouldn't invest heavily in long form, and it's been great for us. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 it, it gets back to the fact that you know there is this complexity of 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 what people are interested in. So you're essentially saying our kids are going to be weird, but we have no way of identifying how weird they're going to. They be. will be messed up just like we are. Yeah, it'll be beautiful. <laughs> All right, Jonah, thank you very much for visiting with us. Thanks for your talk. Uh, I'm John Biggs with TechCrunch, and we are at Disrupt 2013 in New York. Thanks for watching.